since I was very small, I've been making little books by hand that were both picture books and written books. And I've always been interested in pictures and words together. But for some reason, I headed off in the oddball direction of making artist books. And one of the appealing things about that is that you can do the whole thing yourself. You can draw the pictures, you can write the text, you can set type and make paper and bind the book, and it's completely within your control. And so my early work, um, The Adventurous and The Three Incestuous Sisters, these are both books that were published by me in editions of 10, uh, which is not a good distribution strategy. <laughs> but anyway, I, I, it was amazing to do them. Three Incestuous Sisters in particular took 14 years, just because it's so laborious to make all the etchings. The bedrock influence for me is an English illustrator named Aubrey Beardsley, who was a master of pen and ink, and also one of the 19th century's original art bad boys. And I encountered him when I was 14, so he was very formative. Um, he, he has a penchant for the grotesque, which I very much enjoy, and that has uh, allowed me over the years to to be a little bit more out there than I might naturally have been. The thing that was so great about Beardsley was that he was making something that sprung from the text but was new and added to the text, and that was really cool. Other people who are particular influences, there's a German artist named Charlotte Solomon who died in Auschwitz um, at the age of 26, but before that she did her entire life story in, in gouache these beautiful paintings, and um, it's just an amazing thing. It's called Life or Theater, and uh, seeing that when I was quite young, I just thought, wow, this is so amazing that it's, uh, it's, a, it's a deep emotional experience, and she's conveyed all these complicated things through pictures, and it was really a revelation. One comics artist which I think is pretty formative for a lot of people, not just me, is Windsor McKay who did this fantastic strip called Little Nemo in Slumberland. And I'm phenomenally interested in anything about dreams. Uh, Alice in Wonderland is kind of a formative text for me. And so uh, with Little Nemo, it used to take up an entire page every Sunday, and it was in color, and it was just like these unbelievable phantasmagoric things where he would have these dreams, and at the very end in the last panel, he falls out of bed and wakes up every week. But uh, he's been summoned by the king of Slumberland, and the first few weeks he's trying to get to Slumberland, and all these crazy things happen, just like in dreams. And um, just weird things happen, like his bed gets legs and goes through the city, and he's hanging on and trying not to fall off, and it's like towering above the houses, and then he falls out of bed. So, you know, this went on for years, literally, from 1905 to 1913. And Windsor McKay's color sense and his plotting and just, you know, the fact that there's this one character who's just wandering through Slumberland going, what the heck's going on? And everybody else knows what's going on. Those are very interesting to me. It's, it's just a very strange and fantastic thing.